Good Wednesday evening. We welcome you here to Pasadena, Texas to enjoy service with us. We appreciate you joining us tonight. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know what? I've been looking forward to this service for a couple of days now because I know that God's going to be here. God's already here. He was just waiting for us to show up and be ready for him. And he's here. He's ready to move tonight in a special way. He's there with you in your living room or office or wherever you are, enjoying this service with us virtually. And I know he's going to be there with each and every one of us tonight with a special message because God always has something prepared for each one that hears the message because God already knows who's going to hear it. And God lays it on the preacher's heart what to say, and God makes up the difference. And that's such an amazing thing to know and to have is that my God can speak to me through the sermon each time. And so I know we're going to be getting ready for that. And I know you're ready for that. So let's stop for a moment and pray as we get ready for the message. Father, we're thankful right now for this opportunity we have to be in your house. And Lord, we thank you for the message that will be shared here in just a moment. God, as we know that you are going to move in a special way tonight in each heart, in each life. We pray right now, Lord, that you would just touch each one, open our hearts to receive what you have for us tonight. God, move in a special way as we come and thank you for joining us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The link's posted there to be able to give online. We thank you for your giving. We know that God will richly, richly bless you for it because he promised he would. God bless you. Reverend Krauss. Amen. Thank you, sir. Good to be in the house of the Lord physically or through the internet or however it is because... We are the body of Christ, aren't we? Doesn't matter where we are. We are always in the house of God, in the, in the body of God. Amen. God is still on the move. Easter has come and gone, but we still celebrate. We still love Jesus. Still appreciate what he's done for us. I want to uh, read a couple of verses out of Hebrews chapter 10 tonight. Thank God, another beautiful day in Texas. Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 19. This verse 19 and 20. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil of that is to say, his flesh. And we want to use that portion that Paul says, by a new and living way. And we want to preach with the help of the Lord tonight. New living. New living. Let's pray. Reverend, do with your prayers. Father, we thank you right now for your word that you're sharing now through Pastor Kraus. We pray, Lord, that you would just move in a special way, God. Let it find a resting spot in each heart and each life as we come willing and ready to accept your message, God. Unction, Reverend Kraus. Unction the ears that hear this sermon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we just want to encourage everybody to, to hold on, stay the course. God's going to see us through this. Uh, greater times are ahead. And we'll, we will uh, be talking more about that on Sunday. But we want to talk about this new living. God impressed upon my heart this sermon may turn into uh, a series. We'll see how the Lord allows. But there's so much newness in God, isn't there? That's what I love about Christianity. You see someone come. And watch God move in their lives and bring newness into their life. Well, that's what the writer of Hebrews, Paul, was talking about when it was talking about coming into the holiest. 
into a new and by a new and living way that's through Jesus Christ. And we'll get into what that's talking about a little bit later. But first of all, to get into new living, a new way of life, we have to come to the understanding that the old way has got to go. The old way has got to go. Without conversion, we cannot really know Jesus. There has to be a conversion, a change, a, uh, a change of direction, a change of heart, a change of pace in our lives from going one way, turning around and going the complete other direction. Repentance, change. Jesus started his ministry preaching about it. John the Baptist started his ministry, ministry preaching about it. Repent, change, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 2 Corinthians 5.16 says, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more. We don't know Jesus until we really get saved. We can't know Christ after the flesh. We can know about Jesus. We can grow up in church. We can read the Bible. But until we're really saved, really converted, we really don't know Him. These times past have to be just that, in the past. Aren't you glad that Jesus puts our past in the past? He doesn't. So Ephesians 2.11 says this, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called the uncircumcision, He's separating them from the Jews. They were outcasts from the Jewish nation. They were not part of the promise of God. We were in times past, but that which is called circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that ye, at that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. This is... The old way. This is the old way. This is the old life. We can't think about the old life and we can't um, reminisce about the old life with fondness when we look at it for what it really was. We're talking about our life before Christ. B.C., as it were. Before the bloodline that Reverend was talking about Sunday night, that bloodline of Jesus. Before we came to know Christ, this was a description of our life. Maybe those that are there are here now listening. This may be the condition. Having no hope. Away from the promise of God. Without Christ in the world. Without God in the world. But thank God there's hope tonight. We have our midweek services, a time of renewing, a time of refreshing, a time of new hope. There's hope. And it is time for those that are hanging on to the past or those that are living in this condition currently, it is time to be made new. To be made brand new. So he continues in Ephesians 2 is where we're reading the times past where we're without hope, all these things. He continues in verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now we are made close by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> so this goes into our Bible reading. This veil that we pass through into the holiest place is the blood of Christ. It's time to be made new. How are we made new? Through the blood of Jesus. We were talking about in our Bible study last night how Jesus uh, had talked about the law and then really was adding to it, was, was really saying he's not doing away with it, but he's going to fulfill it. And then he was, he was increasing the accountability. He said, you can't just now it's, you can't just not have adultery, but if you look after a woman to lust after her. 
So he was saying these things, and we we talked about the answer to uh, overcome these things. I had one man ask me one time, he said, uh, Cross, what are the Ten Commandments? So we began to read them off to him. He said, yeah, I've, I've about committed, I've about broken every single one of them. But the answer to it is the blood of Jesus, of being saved, of being made brand new. It's not just getting away from that sin, particularly. I need to quit doing this, quit doing that, and quit, yes. But more importantly, we need to be saved. We need to be saved. We need to be set free. We need to have the blood of Jesus applied to our heart and to our life. And then we will not lust after that woman to commit adultery with her in our heart, and our mind already. Because we're saved. We've become new. So this is what he's talking about in 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. We're talking about new life. New life. What is the condition of renewal? If any man be in Christ, in Christ, it implies a personal union with him so that he is the very element or atmosphere in which we live. And that union is brought about by faith in him. He said, you were afar, you were far off. But now, through Jesus Christ, you're made now, you're brought close to God through Jesus Christ. That's the glory of what Christ did for us. That we recently celebrated his death, burial, and resurrection. It drew us close to God. It bridged the gap between man and his creator. It, Jesus it was and is a mediator, a go-between. Bringing, he brings reconciliation. He brings two opposing forces, opposing parties together and brings union. That's what Jesus did for us. Brings union with the Father. That's how we can be made new. It's not about just quit drinking and quit smoking crack. It's getting saved, bringing a union with Christ, and then these things will come. These things will go by the wayside because we're a new creature. We're not, we don't have that old nature anymore. Crack is kind of done away with these days, I think, <laughs> but people still do think. I was seeing this little, uh, little interview with this man in the 70s with this other man. He was a, a NASA, uh, he worked at NASA. He was very intelligent, but he was addicted to crack. And he was talking and explaining how addictive that this was. The first time he did it, he was completely hooked, and he had the intellect to know exactly what was going on, that he was a slave to this drug, that he could not be set free, that every, every ounce of his life was wrapped up in this drug. Jesus sets free, doesn't he? Jesus sets free. We can be new people in Christ. That's how we're made new. And he says, if anybody's in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. All things are of God. How does such a state of union with Christ change a person? It gives a new aim and center for our lives. I like that. A new aim, a new direction, and center. We have to be centered, don't we? I studied that one time a little bit of the martial arts, and they would talk about centering themselves with the earth, and, and to have that center of balance, a very important key of martial art fighting and things. We have to be centered, and our center comes from Christ. He is the center. We're centered with Him, and then wind and waves may come, but we're centered, so we're able to stay. We're, uh, our house, our life is built upon the rock Christ Jesus. That's the Bible there. So, we live not to ourselves when we have this union with Christ, when we accept Him as our Savior, when we call upon Him and ask Him to uh, forgive us and save us. Everything then is different and looks so. Because the center has shifted. 
That union introduces a constant reference to him and contemplation of his death for us and his resurrection for us. That's why it's good to talk about the cross. That's why it's good to think about Jesus. That's why we have a cross in our churches to remember what Jesus went through for us. It centers us, doesn't it? It centers our heart and our mind. He said, looking unto Jesus, author and the finisher of our faith, and it goes on. He says, lest you grow weary and faint in your minds, remember Christ. Otherwise, just the everyday things of life can overcome us, and things can get crazy real fast. We have to remember Christ. He centers us. We're brought together with God, who hath reconciled. All things are of God. We're continuing in uh, 2 Corinthians 5. Who hath reconciled. To himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us. To. Uh, given to us the ministry of reconciliation. This is what we're talking about. Where God. Uh, Jesus brought God and man together. He was suspended between heaven and earth. To bring the two together. Really back together as God intended in the first place. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to us the word of reconciliation. He brought us together in spite of our trespasses. I'm not good enough to be saved. I'm not good enough to dare to come to Christ. And ask forgiveness. That's right. You're not good enough. Neither am I. No one is. That's the mercy and grace of God. We come into His presence and say, Lord, I've got nothing to give you but my life and my heart. And I need everything from you. I need salvation. I need a new life. I'm tired of the old life. And Jesus says, yes. Yes. We have to step into a new life. Okay, back to our Bible setting from our Bible reading in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated us for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house, over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance, having faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. It's not talking about water baptism. It's talking about being saved through the blood of Christ. He's talking to the Hebrews about Hebrew things. He's talking to the Jews about Jewish tradition and uh, Jewish law. They knew exactly what he's talking about. Maybe you know. But this veil, so we'll explain it here. This veil, there was a tabernacle set up before the temple. And there was the different courts and these inner sanctuaries, these inner areas that they would sacrifice the animal as unto the Lord. But in the middle of it all was the most holy, the holy of holies. And in there was the ark of God. And in there, the high priest would go in. And he had to go a certain way. He had to be washed. He had to be dressed properly. He would go in there once a year. And he would meet with God. Right in the middle of it all. He would meet with God on behalf of the people. Bringing the sacrifice and the sprinkling and the offering and the incense. And all the different things in there. The proper, uh, and it was all pointing to Christ. So we talked about a little bit on Sunday, how when Jesus died, that veil that was around that holiest place, there was a curtain around there, so nobody could look in, no, not anybody could just go in there. Very holy. That place that was so holy that no one could go in, but once a year, the high priest and all these stipulations set upon it was ripped wide open from the top to the bottom. When Jesus died, there was an earthquake, and then the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. What was happening? God was showing 
that access to him is now open because of what just happened. Jesus dying on the cross. The veil and access to God the Father is now wide open through Christ. So he's saying here, he's talking about that specifically. We enter into a new and living way. The common man could not go into this holiest place, but now we can. Thank you, Jesus. We can go into the holiest of holies. We can go into that sanctuary. We can go into that special place and meet with God and talk with God, which was not allowed before. But now it is allowed. It is new. It is living. Because we're coming through Jesus Christ. We are washed in the blood of Jesus. That union, we're, we're united with Christ. We have called Him into our lives, asked Him into our lives. That union with Christ breaks the terrible chain that binds us to the past. We have died to that old life. And we are risen again with Him in newness of life. The past is broken as much as if we were dead. It is broken by the great act of forgiveness by Christ to us. Sin holds men, making them feel uh, as if they have no right to enter in. But we die to sin, ask Jesus into our lives, and we have a union which brings power that works within us. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. He, he continues on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another provoking unto love and to good works. And that's one of the, the sections we'll get to by and by. A new love. But first of all, it starts with a new life. New living is, is the series or whatever few services we may get to. But a new life is number one. The union that brings a new, new divine power to work in us. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. We have new life because of what Jesus has done in us and is doing through us. It sets in us a new world, which is yet the old. All things are changed if we are changed. They are the same old things, but we see them in a new light. So, like as if those that were blind were healed, everything is new. I can see now. No doubt. It's a new world to them, yet it, that, that is, nothing has changed, but their vision has changed. And those that are deaf, Jesus cured them. Jesus still heals today, still heals the deaf, the blind, can finally hear. It's all new to them, but it's still the same thing. And I, in reading this and studying this, I have seen a lot of videos of uh, people with the new colorblind corrective uh, lenses. And if you have not seen these videos, try see a few of them. They are awesome. Because what's a big deal, you may think? Well, they put on these glasses, and then those that were colorblind or partially colorblind, it corrects it so they're able to see. Almost every single one of them, they put it on, tears begin to roll down their face. And they're looking around in wonder. And usually the family has different colored balloons and brightly colored uh, clothing on and things because they want to give this experience to this person. And they are in wonder. Everything is new to them. What's changed? The colors are still the same. Their vision has changed. Their outlook has changed. And a lot of them say this. They cry. Even these big burly guys are crying because they can see this color. And they say, this is what I've been missing. This is what I've been missing this whole time. How could I have gone this long without knowing how bright that is, how beautiful that is. Look at the sky, all the shades of blue. This is what it's like to get saved, isn't it? When God opens our eyes, open our, opens our hearts, and we say, this is what I've been missing. Look at the world now. 
Look at this person now. I love them now. I forgive them now. I don't care the color of their skin, where they come from, what they sound like. I love them. This is what I've been missing. Jesus has come into my life and opened my spiritual eyes. He's given me a new vision, a new lease on life. He's given me new living. This is what I've been missing. All this is true when we come to Christ. There's no re reason to despair and think, oh, I can't change. You may have tried and been defeated a thousand times. Try again. Pray again tonight. God will change your vision. He'll change your heart. He'll change your life. There's hope for all. There's hope for me, for you. Pray and call on Jesus to make you new. Step through the veil of his blood and be saved. Let's pray. God, I pray for those that are stuck in the old life, stuck in some sin, keeping them down, keeping them back, that in Jesus' name they would surrender it tonight to you, surrender it to you, they would step through that veil, they would step through your blood and your mercy and ask forgiveness and cleansing and to be made brand new. Forgive, heal, save, as they call upon your heart tonight. Spend a little time right now in prayer. Jesus, renew my vision. Restore my vision, God, so that I can see as you would have me to see. Call upon his name. Get the forgiveness you need, the mercy, the cleansing. Be made new tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a new life. Waiting for each one. All we have to do, call upon his name. There's lots of things God here has laid on my heart. We're going to be dealing with, as the Lord allows, new hope, new way of life, new way of thinking, new way of conducting ourselves, new attitude, new love. Because the new life that Christ brings through salvation, that's really just the beginning. Then all things are made new. And God begins to work things in our lives and we see things differently for the first time. God bless you as our prayer. Have a wonderful night tonight. Be continuing in prayer for our nation, our leaders, uh, the children as they're schooling at home and doing different things, and the, and the mothers that are watching them and helping them. Prayers for all. We love you. God loves you. We'll be back again Sunday morning, 11 o'clock Central Time here in Pasadena, Texas. Join us. Let's see what God has for us. God bless you. Have a good night.